Hey, it's Scrat here from A Squirrel Plays, and now that I've rustled the jimmies of the video game community, I'm going to rustle the jimmies of the D&D community. We're going to talk about one D&D, 5th edition D&D, and honestly just Wizards of the Coast in general. I originally didn't have any plans to talk about one D&D, but it's been cropping up in my social circles the past few weeks, so I thought, why not? Let's talk about how I think it's going to fail successfully. This is going to be a bit of a ramble, so try to stick with me. I'm going to squirrel brain this one for sure. So the first question to get this rolling would probably be, where do you stand on 1D&D? Where does the squirrel stand on 1D&D? Or what does the squirrel think about it? Well, to be completely honest with you, I couldn't give two flying fucks about it, which is ironic considering I'm sitting here making a video about it. But to clarify a bit, what I mean is that I legitimately have no interest in it because I have zero plans to ever use it. I've already told the players in my group that when our campaign is over, I'm done with 5e. I can't see myself ever picking that up again willingly. I would much rather use Easy D6 or my own custom system when that gets finished. Now don't worry, I'll probably still be making some D&D content for the channel, as well as the mods I've been making and such, but lord have mercy, I have no desire at all to GM another 5th edition campaign. That is entirely too much of a headache, which is something I'd like to talk about in another video. So why not give one D&D a shot, you might be wondering? Well, I have my suspicions, and from what little I've seen of the game, those suspicions are correct. Is that one D&D is going to lean even harder into the things that run 5th edition for me. 5e has a lot of issues with it, and from what I've seen, anybody who has the brain capacity to form their own opinion has way more complaints about the game than they do praises. I mean, let's be honest, people have made careers out of mocking D&D and how dumb it is. At least one guy has pretty much made his entire career out of pointing out its flaws. But a bigger question might be is, where do I think 1D&D or Wizards of the Coast slash Hasbro is headed? Well, that, my friends, is a big question. My simple answer is what I said earlier. I think it's going to fail successfully, which might sound just a little bit moronic. What do I mean by that? Well, essentially, it's going to piss off long-term players and push them away, which in turn will give opportunity for other tabletop games to rise in popularity. On the other hand, they'll succeed by drawing in even more new players, and new players spend money. And let's face it, you and I both know the real power in this world ain't magic. It's money! I also seriously doubt this will be their last edition, despite what they said in their announcement video. One of two things is going to happen. One, they'll do a complete 180 on what they said and just flat out release a new edition after some years go by. Or, two, they'll treat this one like a video game and mod and tweak it to death that you won't even be able to recognize it after some years. I'm also going to go off on a bit of a tangent here and speak from some life experience. With the time I've spent in the workforce, it seems pretty clear to me on the outside, even as what I'd still consider a newer player, is that Wizards of the Coast has lost their talent. I've seen this happen several times in well-established companies. They've been around for many, many, many years, and what happens is all that skill and experience that got them where they are today either retires or gets screwed over enough by the company to finally leave. Companies don't like long-term employees because they're expensive. When the purging of the original workforce finally happens, more often than not, they're replaced by young graduates who would not only sell their left nut for a job, but they'd sell their right nut on top of that to get a job at a place like Wizards of the Coast, meaning they'll take whatever lower-than-average salary that they're given. I could be remembering wrong, but I feel like that came to light somewhat recently with Blizzard. Young devs were overly eager to get a job there, and it came out that they weren't even being paid enough to live. Same thing with places like Tesla and Google. Young graduates are told that it'll both be a great place to work, and it'll look great on their resume. Never mind the part it doesn't pay for beans and you'll be miserable the entire time. But my point is, the wizards over at Hasbro are doing the same thing by getting the cheapest workers they can. Their workforce is probably mostly made up of people who weren't even born until somewhere between 2nd and 3rd edition of D&D. Now, I'm not saying you have to be an old fart to have any skill, but you do have to have some years under your belt to have experience. And when most of your workforce is fresh college graduates and lacks experience, well, lots of mistakes are going to get made. Now, I'd like to reiterate that I have zero proof of this. This is just speculation on my part from what I've witnessed and experienced in my own jobs. 
If Wizards of the Coast does have a lot of experience still, then I don't know what their excuse is for all the issues 5e has. And if I haven't run you off yet, you might be wondering what exactly my problem is with 5e that I think 1D&D is going to lean even harder into. And if you have another 5 hours, I'll gladly work you through my list. But I'm assuming you don't, so I'll just stick with the biggest thorn in my side. Essentially, what Call of Duty is to video games, D&D is to tabletop games, and 5th edition to D&D is what Skyrim is to the Elder Scrolls series. It's only coincidence that they're both 5th in their series. What the heck do I mean D&D is Call of Duty and yet somehow Skyrim at the same time? And how is that a bad thing? If you've been playing games for a while, you're probably aware that there are a fair number of people in the world that will play Call of Duty, but nothing else. That's all they know how to play, and they don't want to bother with anything else. It's their comfort food. They got into it because all their friends were playing, and it was considered the cool thing to do at the time. Some of them moved on, some of them didn't. Those who stuck around don't have the desire to try much else. Believe it or not, at one point in time, calling yourself a gamer was social suicide. Being the nerd that played video games was 100% not what made you cool. When Call of Duty started getting really popular, all the dude bros got in on it and the term gamer became socially acceptable. Me, personally, I still cringe and die a little bit on the inside when I hear it, but I suppose that's just the time I grew up in. D&D used to have a super nasty stigma to it too, which is actually a fun and interesting story if you'd like to go down that rabbit hole. Long story short, some lady didn't want to take personal responsibility for her son and blamed it on Dungeons and Dragons and said it was some satanic devil worshipping nonsense. Her claims unfortunately plagued the game for many, many years. Similar to Call of Duty, somewhere down the line, D&D became the cool thing to do and was now completely socially acceptable. The cool kids were in on it now and as time rolled on, even the popular kids were in on it. You know, like Matt Mercer, your favorite YouTubers, and even that silly show that came out. 5th edition was the attempt to ride that ever-growing wave, and it did it extremely well. And to be completely fair, D&D did deserve a bit of a break after the bad rap they got for so long. But the issue is that 5e is built like Skyrim. It gives the players an absolute power trip by giving them the power to do absolutely anything and everything while refusing to challenge them. If you ever find a challenge in 5e, I promise you there is a spell or an ability to get you out of it. And I mean completely out of it, like ignore the challenge altogether. And that's my problem. Wizards of the Coast is going all out and trying to make their game appealing instead of actually good. That's what Elder Scrolls did with each release. The games got simpler and easier with each step in the series, with Skyrim being the latest and consequently the easiest to date. Now, some of you have probably already figured this out by now if you've watched my earlier videos, but I am a big Mega Man fan, or at least the earlier games. In the X series, you'll notice that those games got progressively harder with each game because they were catering to the fans that were playing. That's why each game upped the stakes a little bit more, both in the story, the size of the bad guys you were fighting, and just overall things got more intense. Elder Scrolls and some other video game series have done the complete opposite. They're making things easier and trying to get more and more people in. It's no secret that the average player enjoys an easy game. This might sound a little harsh, but the average person is lazy. The average person doesn't have a whole lot of drive or ambition. They just kind of exist and float through life wherever the winds may take them. Those are the people that will enjoy an easy D&D game and will most likely spend a few bucks on a book or two getting started. After they've had a few games, they'll most likely move on to something else, but that's okay because Wizards of the Coast got their money out of them. As an added bonus, those types of people don't particularly have anything negative to say. When you're an individual with a little bit of drive and ambition, odds are you probably enjoy a little bit of a challenge. You probably enjoy the feeling of overcoming a tough obstacle. And those are the same people that have negative things to say about 5e. Those are the ones that will criticize the game and try to make it better. That comes from passion. They want things to do and be better. And those are the ones that Wizards of the Coast will continue to ignore. Wizards of the Coast wants casuals because casuals spend more money. They're willing to spend a few bucks to try something new with their friends and then they'll be on their way. Whereas long-term players will complain more than they spend. Believe you me, the wizards at Hasbro will shape this game to appease the greater majority of the general populace, whether they play their game or not, and ignore the general majority of their actual fan base. 
And on the topic of spending money, let's talk about the virtual tabletop scene and monetization. It's old news by this point that along with 1D&D, they plan to release their own virtual tabletop for playing on. Personally, I can't wait to see the dumpster fire that ensues. But on a more sad note, I'm afraid of what it will do to third-party programs. Roll20 can go die in a fire for all I care, but programs that actually work, such as Foundry, will be a major bummer to watch suffer. If they're able, I can easily see Hasbro making life difficult for third-party virtual tabletops. How exactly they'll do it, I don't know, but if there's a way they can prevent others from using their rule sets, they will. What's more likely to happen, though, is microtransactions for days. Again, this will be geared towards casual players because casual players are lazy and will spend the money on convenience. I will say this, though. I'm fine with them having a free virtual tabletop and charging for modules. That makes sense to me because, one, you gotta make money somehow, and two, modules would hopefully come with an abundance of content. What wouldn't be okay, though, is them selling off little things like pieces of equipment or items, custom classes, races, spells, all that stuff. So this is a squirrel from the future. After recording this and going over it to edit it, I realized that you can't say race in D&D anymore. You have to say species. I honestly wouldn't be surprised at all if they basically just started selling what are essentially mods for D&D posing as optional rules. If they don't go that route, then they will 100% nickel and dime you to death on your token creation with cosmetic options. You just wait, man. That virtual tabletop of theirs is going to be an absolute moneymaker. You know, after its initial crash and burn because none of it even works. Also, and I won't go too far off into the weeds on this one, but I also half expect them at some point in the near future to try and make their virtual tabletop run without a GM. And you're probably thinking that's crazy because having a GM makes D&D what it is, right? The GM is a living, breathing game machine that creates imbalances in real time as you and your fellow players make decisions. True, but challenge is also something that makes a game good, and Wizards of the Coast seem pretty focused on getting rid of that. So we'll see. That might be another topic entirely to talk about. But after all that negativity, what's the bright side of all this? Well, I think the bright side is that it'll give other tabletop games a moment to shine. D&D has gotten absolutely too big for its britches, and lots of people don't even realize there's a slew of other options out there. If you were thinking about making your own game and you have been procrastinating, now is the time to get on it. When one D&D drops, you're going to have a batch of potential customers looking for something else. Lots of people are already unhappy with 5e, and with one D&D basically being 5.5, it's likely that it will be enough to push them into something else. But even with all that, I'm sure Wizards and Hasbro will still make plenty of money. That's what I mean by failing successfully. My guess is that most fans of D&D that have been around for a couple editions or more will consider this a failure, while at the same time it will rake in piles of cash from newcomers. But more importantly, today's shout-out goes to Simon the Kind Cutthroat. With a name like that, how could you not give him a shout-out? Simon left a really nice write-up on an earlier video I did about post-launch updates to video games. Some things he agreed on and some things he outright disagreed on. Thing is, he presented his points wonderfully in a nice, calm, and well-laid-out manner. We had a little back and forth, and things were all right, man. And that's how it should be. We should be able to discuss things we disagree on without things getting heated or hurling insults. Now, I might be preaching to myself on that one, because I know I get my tail a little ruffled when people start disagreeing with me, but... I'm working on it. That's what we're here for, discussion and growth, and hopefully fun. Anyway, that's all I got. Again, I'd like to clarify that this is just all my speculation and what I predict to go down and what's happening behind the scenes. Obviously, I'm just a random YouTuber with absolutely no proof whatsoever, and all I have to go on is my own personal experiences. So what are your thoughts? Is D&D doomed? Will it ever be the same again? Are you abandoning ship and seeking somewhere else to go? Do you think everything is fine and dandy and you look forward to the one D&D? Or will you just stick with 5e and ignore it altogether? Let me know in the comments what you think. What are your thoughts on this whole debacle? Let me know in the comments what tabletop games are you playing right now. Maybe you're not even in the D&D scene and you're just having a laugh at the rest of us. If so, can I join? 